In today's video, we're going to cover the New Edge Mustangs, the 99 through 2004. I'm going to try to cover everything that you need to know about these cars. Then we're going to go for a ride in one, one that I think is used the proper and correct manner. So buckle up. Here we go. The New Edge Mustang, manufactured from 1999 through 2004, was a redesigned SN95. First built in December of 98, with production starting in November of 98. Informally, it was called the SN99. It featured sharper lines, larger wheel arches to accommodate larger wheels. The car did carry the same roof line and interior. Gone were the soft, rounded lines of the SN95. Sharper corners appeared all over the car, especially noticeable in the grille, headlight, and taillight areas. Sharp creases ran down the body line and the faux air intakes on the rear quarters and deck lid. The drive lines of the New Edge cars carried over from the SN95. The base V6 engines varied in horsepower by a total of three during the five-year run, starting with 190 horsepower 99 and ending with 193 in 2004. That's really all you need to know about those engines, and that's all I'm going to cover here. The V8s varied greatly, so we will cover a lot of those here. Starting with the 99 edition 4.6 liter single overhead cam V8, the two-valve engine, was found in the Mustang GT and it delivered 260 horsepower and 300 foot pounds of torque. I'm going to cover some special editions here. In 2000, a unique trim called the Spring Feature Edition was available in GT models, offered only in performance red, laser red, black, silver, white, or zinc yellow. The Spring Feature contained 17 inch by 8 inch performance wheels and tires, a body colored hood scoop, body colored side scoops, two black GT stripes on the hood, black Mustang inserts on the embossed bumper. Ford produced 3,091 Spring Feature GT. Tees. In 2001, the Special Edition Bullet was released to the public. Available only as a coupe, the Bullet was a mildly upgraded version of the standard GT. Factory upgrades included a lower suspension, subframe connectors, Tokika shocks, and brakes from the Cobra. The car also received an upgraded exhaust and a redesigned intake. These power upgrades led to a factory rating of 265. That's five more than the standard GT. On the exterior, the car received the torque thrust style wheels, removal of the fog lamps and rear deck spoiler, as well as new trim accents. It was available in three colors, dark highland green, true blue, and black. In 2003 to 2004, Ford reintroduced the Mach 1 nameplate. The Mach 1 was equipped with a 4.6 liter double overhead cam 305 horsepower engine based on the engine available in the 99 and 2001 Mustang Cobras with new cylinder heads from the 2003 to 2004 Cobra. We're going to cover that one in a moment. The interior of the car was given a retro theme with seats made to look like the comfort weave seats available in the 60s era Mach 1. It also featured retro theme gauges and a unique aluminum shifter ball. On the vehicle's exterior, a Mach 1 package was applied consisting of a functional shaker scoop, decals set on the hood, rocker panels and door panels, a special chin spoiler, a flat black rear spoiler, Magnum 500 style wheels, and the seat pillar covers used on the 94 to 98 Mustang. The car also received similar suspension upgrades as the Bullet, including unique Tokika struts on the rear and the convertible spec subframe connectors. I own one of these cars for the better part of four years. I can say I love that car. It was mildly modded with Ford Racing camshafts and long tube headers, and it performed very well, especially in the era. All 99 through 2004 SVT Cobras featured an independent rear suspension. It was the first to be fitted to a production Mustang model and unique to the Cobra. It had an upgraded 4.6 double overhead cam V8, rated at 320 horsepower and 317 foot-pounds of torque. However, when the new 99 Cobras were put through their paces, it was revealed that 0 to 60 times were slower than a comparably equipped 98 model. And dyno tests suggested that the advertised power output was closer to 285 horsepower, even though Ford claimed that the engine was outputting 15 more than the 1998 Cobra. Due to this, on August 6, 1999, Ford halted all sales of unsold 1999 Cobras on dealership lots and recalled all 1999 Cobras that had been sold. Ford replaced the intake manifold, certain computer components, and the exhaust system from the catalytic converters to the tailpipes to achieve a true 320 horse at the crankshaft. The 1999 Cobra was available in four exterior paint colors, Rio Red, Electric Green, Ebony Clear Coat, or Ultra White. Interior color choices were Dark Charcoal and medium parchment. The standard leather seats were the same optional leather units used in the 1999 Mustang GT without the embroidered running pony logo on the front seat backs. On Cobra convertibles, the vinyl top was available in black, parchment, or white. Because of the 1999 Cobra performance issues, the standard 2000 SVT Cobra was pulled from production and did not return until 2001, then rated at a true 320 horsepower. 2000, however, did see the Cobra R. 
2000 also saw the release of the Mustang Cobra R, a limited production run of only 300 units. The Cobra R came standard with a 5.4 liter, 330 cubic inch double overhead cam V8 engine with a 6500 RPM redline. It was rated at 385 horsepower and 385 foot pounds of torque. Independent dyno tests suggest the engine may have been underrated. The cast iron block was based on the 5.4 liter block that Ford used in his trucks at the time. The cylinder heads were later used on the 2005 and 2006 Ford GT. As with previous Cobra R models, the 2000 model was designed to be a race-ready, high-performance vehicle in a perfectly street-legal package. As such, it lacked any of the comforts that the standard Cobra enjoyed. This model had no radio, audio equipment, no air conditioning, no cruise control, and no rear seat. Each of the 300 units produced featured a performance red exterior and a dark charcoal interior with cloth Recaro bucket seats. While the 2001 Cobra shared many of the same components of the 99 Cobra, some changes were made. A Windsor aluminum block or WAP block, a WAP block is regarded to be weaker than the previous block. Some 2001 Cobras received the previous block either from the factory or as a replacement motor. Revised cylinder heads. The Tremec T45 transmission was replaced by the Tremec TR3650 transmission. The axle shafts and differentials were changed from 28 splines to 31 splines. The rear deck lid spoiler was redesigned. A rear bumper that read Cobra instead of Mustang. A single CD player was upgraded to the larger single face six disc unit. The center console and trim were redesigned. The buttons for the fog lamps, rear window defroster, and anti skid system were moved to the panel below the new radio unit. A new steering wheel and an upgraded mock audio system. Cobra specific seats with a combination of leather bolsters, Alcaterra inserts, and larger headrests. With all the above listed changes, the 2001 Cobra was able to go 0 to 60 in 5.4 seconds and do the quarter mile in 13.8 at 102 miles per hour. The cars were electronically limited to a top speed of 150. The 2001 Cobra was available in eight exterior colors, zinc yellow, laser red tinted, performance red, true blue, mineral gray, ebony silver, and crystal white. Once again, there were two interior colors, dark charcoal or chocolate brown leather. 2002 once again saw no Cobra Mustangs produced for the U.S. market, but in the spring of 2002, the 2003 Cobra, codenamed Terminator by the SVT development crew, came to market. This Cobra came with a supercharged 32-valve double overhead cam 4.6-liter V8. It was rated at 390 horsepower and 390 foot-pounds of torque. Numerous improvements were made to the powertrain and driveline to handle the power increase from the previous model setup. A cast iron block was used instead of the previous aluminum unit with stronger internals. These these updates were critical in order to support the 8 pounds of boost delivered from the stock Eaton M112 Roots type supercharger. Other improvements include the use of a lightweight aluminum flywheel connected to a Tremec E56 6 feet transmission, a 3.55 rear axle ratio, and stronger 31 spline half shafts with revised upper and lower control arms. These modifications enable the Cobra to go 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds and do the quarter mile in 12.67 seconds at 110 miles per hour. The car was electronically governed to a top speed of 1. The 2003 Cobra boasted several visual and functional improvements. These exterior differences included a new front fascia with an integrated spoiler, front brake air ducts, a new rear fascia with a black insert which visually integrated the exhaust pipes, a composite hood with dual functional heat extractors, newly designed side scoops. The side skirts were specifically designed for the Terminator Cobra, featuring a smooth body line from the door to the bottom of the car. SVT also introduced new 5-spoke 17 by 9 inch wheels, available in a standard machine face to aluminum with metallic argent painted pockets or optional chrome. Finally, the Terminator Cobra sported a new deck lid spoiler with an integrated LED brake light. By the end of the model year, the 2003 Cobra was offered in 10 exterior paint colors, zinc yellow, dark shadow gray, torch red, red fire, sonic blue, mineral gray, satin silver, ebony, silver, and oxford white. All 2003 Cobras had dark charcoal interiors. The seats were upholstered in a dark charcoal leather and suede inserts in either medium graphite or medium parchment. On Cobra convertibles, the canvas top was either black or parchment depending on the color of the chosen suede. The 2004 Cobra was a carryover to the 2003 Cobra with a few minor updates. A slightly updated exhaust system, the addition of a newly integrated shift light, and the availability of Cirrus satellite radio. The 2004 Cobra was available in eight exterior paint colors, competition orange, Torch Red, Screaming Yellow, Red Fire, Mystachrome, which was the $3,650 option, Ebony, Silver, and Oxford White. 
Ford celebrated its 100th anniversary in June 2003 and released a 100th anniversary Mustang GT model, which only came in black, with a two-tone parchment interior. In 2004, the 40th anniversary edition was announced. Both of these models, like the Spring feature in 2000, were cosmetic ads with no actual performance upgrades. There are also numerous Roush and Saline editions of the New Edge Mustang, but they were not official Ford products, so we'll save those cars for another video. The 2004 Mustangs and Cobras were the last Mustangs to be built at Ford's historic Dearborn Assembly Plant in Dearborn, Michigan, and Ford Motor Company had made the decision to end the Mustang production there rather than updating the plant for the 2005 model. Allow me to introduce you to Mike Cole and his 2002 Mustang GT convertible. A couple things about Mike. He prefers to drive his car with the top down. Mike is one of the members of the Mustang Club of Central Pennsylvania. He also helps organize its Covered Bridge Cruise. This is an event that's held solely to benefit a charity each year. Mike designs a route through 10 to 12 of Lancaster County's covered bridges and leads the pack in his convertible. This tour is attended by 80 to 100 cars each year and takes you right through the heart of Amish country. 2022 marks the 14th anniversary of this event. I went for a ride with Mike to get his thoughts on his car. FYI, some of the audio in this might be a bit off because the top's down, but that's just how it is when you roll with Mike. Is the top down in this car more than it's up? Yeah, I only take it. If I can't put the top down, we'll you don't take, take it. Drive. I wasn't really looking for a car when I bought this. I was just driving by a, a small dealership there by the buck. This thing was sitting out front, and it just kind of called out to me. But no, that was that was in 06? Yeah. You have some gears in the back of this thing? Are they 373s or 410s? 411. 411. 410, 411, Yeah, whichever. you can tell it's geared up a little bit. Yeah, but they made this car a lot more fun to drive. The gears? What yeah. was in it? Like 345? Whatever came from the factory. Yeah, probably like 345. Some crazy highway gear. Yeah, you get a lot more off the line with those gears. I really noticed it at Kentucky Dragway. <laughs> Did you have the top down on the dragway? No, 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 no. No, <laughs> they wouldn't let you. I don't know if they'd let me or not, but I've never been to any drag strip where they would, so I just preemptively put it up. But you had the top down on BIR. BIR. Summit, Summit point. point. You had the top down. Road Atlanta twice. Road Atlanta twice with the top down. And that uh, the Shenandoah Speedway. Yeah. That oval track. That oval track is crazy. I did that with the top down too. How long have you been doing the cover bridge tour? This year will be the 16th one. 16th year. Yep. And I mean you, now correct me if I'm wrong, but you organize most of that. Yeah. You organize all the routes and everywhere we go. And I do. I organize all the routes and the stops and all that stuff. That's obviously a Hearst shifter. Yes. You went with all like Hearst accessories. Is there a reason for that? Well, because yeah. that's that's what they had when I was a kid. Is that's what I was going to ask you? So the Hearst stuff is kind of a throwback to yeah. what? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, people thought I was crazy. I get home from driving, you know, two, three thousand miles a week in the truck. And the first thing I want to do is get in the car and drive somewhere. Mike loves driving this car. Don't take my word for it. He can tell you. I'm happy with it. I really like it. I really like this car. In the beginning of the video, I said it would feature someone that uses their car correctly. When Mike purchased his car, it had 18,000 miles on it. It now has 97,000 miles on it. That's 79,000 miles of smiles. There are many in the automotive community that never drive their cars. If that's you, I would ask you to consider that cars were meant to be driven and the best cars were meant to be enjoyed. None of us are mortal. We're all gonna pass on someday. But when I do, I'd like my cars to be thoroughly used, not destroyed, but enjoyed. If you'd like to join Mike in the Central Pennsylvania Mustang Club, I'll put a link in the description. They'll drive you through Amish country, drive over a lot of covered bridges. They stop at a place called Hershey Farms for dinner. They serve a homemade Pennsylvania Dutch smorgasbord there. It's pretty good. You also get a nice discount for being part of the cruise. If you enjoyed this video, maybe check out everything you need to know about Boss 302s, the 2012 2013s. That's going to be here somewhere. Also, I did a video similar to this on the 2007 to 2014 Shelbys. Thanks for watching. Till next time, we'll see you.